Hello there everybody and welcome to this program about the VOR hold. We're going to be flying the hold this time now that we've looked at the procedure theoretically. And we're going to start off in a less complex aircraft, so we're in the real air Duke turbine. Which is a little bit more straightforward than a Q400 or other uh, complex airliner just to make things a little bit uh, easier for demonstration purposes. So for this flight what we're going to be doing is heading to Southampton VOR to join the hold. We're coming from Goodwood which is to the east of Southampton in the south of England. So as you remember coming from the east westbound inbound to the Southampton VOR will require a parallel hold. That means flying to the beacon we then turn outbound on a leg that is both reciprocal to and parallel to the inbound track so the inbound track is 031 degrees so we'll fly our outbound leg of 211 degrees initially we'll fly that leg as I say for one minute and we'll then turn left either to intercept the inbound track of the hold or actually to fly directly to the beacon whichever is most convenient we will then start our standard rate turn from the beacon outbound and we've joined the hold don't forget we need to ident the beacon first to make sure that we do actually have the correct beacon tuned and we do this by listening to the Morse code ident which is broadcast uh, as part of the navigation aids frequency. You will also have to do this in the Q400 because unlike a more complex aircraft like a 737 or an Airbus the electronic instruments in the Q400 won't usually if I remember rightly identify a navigation aid ident automatically. For each turn of the hold it is good to remember the five T's. I'm not sure whether these are in common use in British or European instrument instruction but I know that they use the five T's in America and I think it's a very useful thing to remember. The first T is turn so obviously as we pass over the beacon we'll know we've passed over it because the HSI will begin to topple or the OBS if you're using uh, something like a Cessna less advanced than the real air turbine it will begin to topple and we'll also get a flag as we pass over the beacon and it becomes unreadable to the aircraft temporarily we'll be using the turn coordinator to make sure that we don't exceed the standard rate one turn as far as I know in the instrument test if during the holding procedure you exceed the rate one turn at any point then you do fail the test so it's important to make sure uh, by looking at the turn coordinator that we don't exceed that and don't forget on a suitably marked turn coordinator the first notch would usually represent a rate one turn the next one is time so every time we turn we're going to be using the stopwatch or the timer to make sure that each leg of the hold is one minute in length that's what we're looking for the next one is twist so we're making sure that the HSI in this case or the OBS in a less complex aircraft is pre-selected to the uh, required track so once we have started the outbound leg of our parallel entry then we will pre-select on the HSI the inbound track of the hold so that we can turn to intercept it. Then it's tyres so making sure that the landing gear is selected as required we're going to be leaving the landing gear up for our uh, demonstration. And then the final one is torque so communicating to air traffic control that you have entered the hold or that you're on the outbound leg as applicable. So we're getting close to the hold now within one nautical mile. We're going to start our parallel and reciprocal 
outbound leg for the parallel entry as soon as we get over the beacon. So as we get closer to the beacon the HSI will begin to topple and we'll get a flag eventually. So there goes the HSI, there goes the flag. We can now start our turn. And we're then going to fly the outbound and reciprocal leg of the parallel entry for one minute. After one minute, we then turn left either to fly straight to the beacon or indeed to intercept the inbound track of the hold. Checking the turn coordinates to make sure we don't exceed a rate one turn. We're now going to turn to intercept the inbound track of the hold. So we we'll use a heading of roughly north thereabouts so that we can intercept the inbound track of 031 degrees. Once established we then fly to the beacon and once we're over the beacon we then start our rate one turn onto the outbound track of the hold and we've now joined the hold. So using the 5Ts and also on the secondary HSI, or with the OBS rather, setting the perpendicular track from Southampton. And once that secondary HSI centres with the adjacent 121 degree outbound radial set, we know then that we are exactly parallel to the beacon and we can start our outbound leg. So as the secondary HSI centres, or OBS rather, we now know that we are parallel to the Southampton VOR and we start the timer for the outbound leg of one minute. Once the outbound leg of one minute is completed, we start our one minute turn inbound, not exceeding a standard rate turn, making sure that the OBS is or rather the HSI is pre-selected to the inbound track of the hole of 031 degrees and if you don't restart the timer for the outbound leg if you forget to do so as I've done just uh, use two minutes rather than one uh, so after two minutes you should have completed both the outbound leg and the inbound turn And that's the inbound turn completed, pretty much exactly on the two minute mark. We're on the inbound track of the hold now, 031 degrees, correcting slightly just to make sure that we're exactly on it. But we're now on the inbound, inbound track of the hold. And as you can see, that's a uh, pretty good racetrack pattern completed. As I said to you in part one, the outbound leg can be pretty much any kind of shape or duration but for the inbound leg we really must have it one minute in length and going to the beacon on the published inbound track so hopefully we should be flying over the beacon and get the HSI topple and flag on the one minute mark if we've done the hold properly Perfect.
Here we have a diagrammatic representation of the hold that we've flown, just to make things easier to visualize. So we fly outbound, first of all, on the reciprocal track. We then turn to intercept the inbound track of 031 degrees to the beacon. Once over the beacon, we start our standard rate turn outbound. Once parallel with the VOR, we then start our timer for the one minute outbound leg and then after that turn inbound on the track of 031 degrees back to the beacon. By the way, just to avoid any confusion I thought I'd reiterate that we set the 1 to 1 degree radial on the secondary OBS to ensure that we know when we've started the outbound leg. Obviously, if we've done a perfect rate one turn outbound from the beacon, we should be parallel to the beacon after 60 seconds. And we know we're parallel to the beacon because by the time the aircraft reaches the purple dot you can see on the diagram, which is the 1 to 1 degree radial, as that OBS centers, we want to be on the start of our outbound leg. If the OBS centers before 60 seconds, then we know that we're turning too steeply on our outbound turn. If the OBS centers after 60 seconds, then we know we're not turning steeply enough. I should also reiterate that for ease of demonstration, the hold that I performed was in zero wind, calm wind and weather conditions. Obviously if we had a very strong crosswind then we would require correction in order to account for the drift caused by that crosswind. And real pilots use either the Dalton computer, fly computer, which personally I find very old-fashioned. You can get digital apps on iTunes, there's a very good one. And IVAO also do a very good one. This allows you to work out the aircraft's true airspeed. As that is to say the speed in which the aircraft is operating in the air mass in which it is flying and then using that true airspeed it allows you to work out given the current winds which you'd get either from the form 214 for the Met Office or uh, Active Sky Next seeing as we're in the sim you'd get the winds aloft you can feed the true airspeed and the winds aloft into the computer or into uh, the IVAO application or the iTunes application and it will then give you the corrected heading to fly.